back to game one bans here for EDG with the Z coming inside to ban the Maokai, so expecting that to be the first rotation pick from AHQ on their side. We've obviously seen Kalista being first picked before from EDG. If I'm AHQ now, you're down 2-0. You gotta try something. I would leave something like Brexite and Kalista open and say whichever you don't get, we take the other one and we try and use that one pick for standard lanes if possible and use that to try and snowball. You gotta make sure you pinch it too, of course. If you take, you know, the Hecarim and they take Nara, it's not a big deal. If you take Rek'Sai and they still get the... Yeah, so that's what they're doing. Yeah. And, and you know, and if Edward Gaming still got something they really care about. So here's the oh. Urgot, but Kalista, of course, is still open. Nar can be taken, it removes all the other great top players we've been seeing in the series as well. Yeah, if Urgot had been the first pick, I don't think HQ would mind that because they want Kalista Rek'Sai. Edward Gaming is showing, yeah, we know what picks <laughs> we, know what you guys we just want. want to show the three that we're talking about here. I like the Hecarim ban, it has to happen. You cannot give Hecarim to Koro. This obviously is risky. Deft is a fantastic Urgot player. Really shines in these big team fights. But if you're IHQ, you gotta take some chances. This may all also pull out the Alistar pick, which we thought would be something that would go between the teams throughout this uh, best yeah. of five series. And now with AHQ to kind of see what they want, that Urgot pick is definitely playing on their minds here for Death. Yeah, so AHQ don't have to pick Kalista because of Urgot already being right. locked in. We expect it to go to Death. So they can take Thresh or maybe they can go for the Gnar to take that away from the top lane. We've already two bands here. Mako has been great on Thresh though, setting up so many picks for the team. So I understand why they would take it. But honestly, if you go now, Rek'Sai here, you secure a fantastic 2-2. Two and two, mm. Strong team fight as well. We know it's going to be the Cinderhold Rek'Sai. And you take that now away from Coral with Malka and Hecarim being banned. Yeah, I think this is definitely the most likely two champions to grab. Now, it does allow the Sejuani for clear love. The junglers were not really pinched. I'm actually still a bit surprised to see AHQ uh, ban the sort of weak 1v1 teamfight mages away from Pawn. I actually want to see them let him play these AOE mages and just let Westdoor right. counterpick and play a Fizz and just wreck the matchup 1v1. That's not AHQ's plan here. They want to get rid of the team fight power, but they still got to get through things like Kasten, who are carrying games for Edward Gaming. Just like you, Pastry Time was a little shocked they let Pawn roam free on his Kasten in last game. So yeah. definitely something that they felt comfortable with. We'll see what they do this time. There it is, Deficio. You did say the Thresh plays from Mako. We're on point this time. It looks like it may happen again. I'm surprised to say clear love fake Gragas. He's typically not gone for that champion, only yeah. when Rek'Sai and Sejuani are both off the table. But clear love saying, okay, I will hold up to your early game aggression. These are the two most common strong early yeah. game junglers while still being tanks. Gragas is generally a pretty good pick into Rek'Sai. Once you get a few levels, you can start handling it pretty well. And your 2v2 skirmish as a jungler as Gragas is fantastic as well. So I quite like the pick for clear love showing. He has multiple ones he can play. Spawn was talking about how Nunu hasn't been shown yet from him. But AHQ, we know they're going to go for Kalista. That's one of the reasons they didn't ban it, to say, okay, you get Urgot, ran off, we take Kalista later on. They go for it. If they lock in an Annie, that's quite an aggressive lane. You obviously don't really want to throw in Annie into the enemy team, but you can now have her flash tippers and then pull her back out in these team fights, and she can get another rotation of spells to land another stun later on. And also just together, the poke that can apply in the 2v2 lane is very strong. They have to try yeah. and force it. Yeah, Annie, the longest range support commonly played in League of Legends, really good at triggering that W. 12% max health up until level 13 or 14 when you put another point into it. So AHQ, the two on two, definitely strong for them. Urgot Thresh, of course, also a scary one. So a two on two would be very volatile here between these two teams. Yeah, Urgot is not the greatest lane swap AD carries. That could show that EDG want to go bottom lane already, and AHQ might just go down there and meet them. But there's always this mind games going on. Ooh. This Ooh, is... indeed. Now, Aurelia is a champion. That needs a nerf. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> it happened just last month. I like the reference, though. <laughs> I always really liked Aurelia into NAR. It was, it was commonly considered the counter pick, but we had recently seen Aurelia picked into that matchup and not do very well. TF in for Pawn, Fizz in for Westward. This is the style I want to see AHQ use with the abusive Fizz matchup. Aurelia versus Nara, though, very tricky. It is very tricky. It can heavily right. snowball either way, honestly. Once Aurelia picks up Sheen and Phage, she's going to look to go very aggressive when you're in mini Nara. Try and get that kill here. We know the jungle is going to look towards the top lane as well, because when you have an Aurelia, you better go gank for that lane, because in order for it to be effective, be as strong later on in fights. She needs to get going early on. 
So Edward Gaming here, not looking to lane swap. Urgot is a weak lane swap to carry, and you'd never want to put Aurelia in a lane swap. So they're definitely looking for standard lanes. HQ should know it. Meet them down in the bottom in two and two, and we're going to have to see the jungle action in the top lane. Who can win out? I like it because both of these teams almost mirror each other anyways. We've seen it in the beginning 20 minutes of each game. A lot of bottom lane focus for these AD carries. They have some of the highest one and two kill, par kill, uh, kill participation in the tournament for AD carries. So why not get these guys going? Deft on Azurgot and on the Callista. So almost everyone going to play the cream of the crop for their yeah. champion pools here. I think the early aggression definitely coming out for both these teams, and it really could be any lane. HQ known to camp bottom, but top and mid just as likely. And head over to Twitter and update your picks for this semifinal. You know the deal at LOL Esports using either hashtag EDGWin or hashtag AHQWin. We are about to get on to the rift. It has been a long day in AHQ. Would Mike like to make it longer for you with some wins of their own here in this best of five series game point for EDG in the semifinals of the midseason invitational? <laughs> of course it is, the TSC. <laughs> Why not? All right, let's see what's going to happen here between the two teams. EDG want to try and get standard lanes in this game despite lane swapping twice before. And then it's going to be so much about Coral in this top lane. The Urgot Thresh should be able to handle themselves fairly simple in 2v2. Can we snowball the top lane here for EDG? Otherwise, the pick is really going to get outscaled yeah. by a NAR. And it's tricky because there's so much that's important around the map. Left untouched entirely, Ziv can just push forever in Narvis Aurelia, and the minion wave will be too big for Aurelia to ever win that fight in any meaningful capacity. But if, if you push all the time, of course, it means Clilip wants to gank you, and Mal would have to track him. That said, we know AHQ ganks bot lane 24 7, and that's another pressure point that EDG has to deal with. That's the thing here for AHQ. If they manage to secure and maybe early risk Scuttler or a good ward, for Ziv in the top lane. He can play very passive and say, I'm not going to fall for a potential gank coming in from clear love, and instead have Mountain put focus on the bottom side of the map. Because mid lane, you obviously want West on Fist to get a good start so you can yeah. keep jump jumping the Twisted Fate so you can stop him from even moving around the map. And also, you want to make sure Anne has a great time in lane. So I can definitely see HQ leave the Gnar alone and say, just play safe. We're going to snowball two other lanes at once. Slow yeah, movement yeah. in here from EDG. That ward did see them a little bit ago, but not the full team moving through here. So Deft was only one seeing places. Oh. Let's see what they can get out of this. I'm gonna go and stop the Grump. HQ haven't spotted them yet. There's a ward being placed. That's gonna be a flash at least. And a gold and. card right on the end. The body slam as well. Down he goes. First blood for Deft. And clear left gets the first jungle camp. So a ward gets placed over the wall. AHQ had nothing in the river to spot EDG moving in. Catch him out and didn't notice anything. He jumped down to three guys from EDG. Ends up dying for it. Flash being blown from Albus as well. Terrible start for AHQ in a 2v2 lane they were looking to take. See if they can get back into this one. And definitely needing to be a big factor in this one on Callista. That lane is something they need to get going, and it's going to be even harder now that it's set back. Just two minutes in, EDG find their first kill, and it was only Koro that didn't get anything out of that. So everybody's starting with a little oh. something extra. And Anne missed the ward of the wall as well. It's a hard one to screw up, but Anne, unfortunately, face, face plants a ward as well. Albus now, oh. of course, to... Uh, oh, he's got... He does have a ward. A puts green. A ah, the safe ward. So we'll get one of the wards down. This one is not going to cover anything, though, if Clearloft decides to walk from the tri-bush. Obviously, EDG didn't see the ward being placed, I believe, just outside the vision of the Rift yeah. Scuttler. So they don't know it's right there. But if Clearloft does walk down to the spot on lane, he has to walk through the river to get spotted. And again, there's an Annie with no flash. That's a very easy gank for Clearloft to pull off. Right now, EDG is pushing it in, though, Mountain. We talked about this early. Starting a new way, he takes a Rift Scuttler on the top side to allow the Gnar also to play aggressive. Because in the start, before Aurelia gets items, yeah. Gnar can really push her down, get some good trading with her, but it requires him to stay safe in terms of warding. But speaking of staying safe, Mountain is taking this blue buff on top of the ward, realizes that Pawn has come to stop this, and Mountain has got to be real careful because Clear Love is there as well. There's the Wolf Spirit spotting yeah. them all out. What a great smite on that. Saved his life. Coming in from Pawn there, and it looks like he doesn't get too much after that. But Mountain's able to do a little bit of harass inside the jungle of EDG. 
Mountain really want to look for some of these early ganks. The problem is two of his lanes, the soul lane, as a push down to the tower, and the bottom lane one you know is warded up by EDG. So going for that gank can be fairly risky. Going to pull off. He's moving down though. He knows Gragas is top lane. This is yeah, a guaranteed 3v2. He wasn't spotted because he went through the mid here, so he's behind the bottom lane of EDG. Only, and he's missing flash, otherwise all summoners are up. Here in comes Mountain. Deft is low on mana. Mako flashes. Oh, what a knock up onto Deft! The man's got flash, and out he goes. Prox the W. Mako does not have any summoners left either. Rend is still on, and not going to get much more than that, but a lot of damage dealt in the bot lane. And have just a very good route here from Mountain through the mid lane, expecting the river wards from EDG. And of course, waiting for Lantern, getting that nug up. Such a beautiful play. Two summoners down suddenly, HQ pushing the lane in. Well, falling behind the CS though. Clear love is top right now, and you do have a pushed up Ziv waiting for that Narbar to go down. He starts oh, to make boy. a move. Minions will see him out early. This might be a bounce over the head here. Which way is Ziv gonna go? It looks like he wants to take the dangerous road, and he already oh. took aggro from a hit on Decoro just in range of the turret. And you know this is gonna happen when you play Aurelia into Nar. You know EDG is gonna try and gank for him. We see Mountain try and do the same on the other side of the map. Rinse and repeat, those flashes are down. It could be a good chance here, as long as Mako doesn't make it too far for that Lantern on Daft. EDG is going to push it out here. The wave is pushing quite heavily in favor of AHQ. Clearlove's heading over. There's only so much here. time AHQ has before Clearlove can counter gank this, and if Mountain isn't burrowed, he won't know that Clearlove is coming. That push on top lane as well. Koro actually seems to be freezing it, so he may stay up there. No teleport for him, unless it really does get too messy here in the bottom lane. Mountain has left so far, Still and it may no be now for clear love. Right. Still no flash in the bottom lane for Albus in case anything happens. Trading in the mid lane, Westor and Mountain are near here. He's spotted, but he's going in anyway. Shark hits, Pawn does not have any summoners left. He pops Ghost to run a bit faster. The summonerless TF will get out. Westor takes a big chunk of health, but they... HQ knows exactly where Clearlove is. Clearlove knows where Mountain is. Junglers are spotted. No easy aggression here. Yeah, just clear of trying to walk around, see if he can protect his lanes. He went straight to the bottom lane after basing, knowing there was a high chance of Mountain yep. being there. Just a great read from him. HQ will spot him with this ward here. Gonna have to go for a tower dive, and now you can see Mountain coming down, this time for the counter gang. So both junglers really trying to follow each other around. And Westward's coming too. Game three, just as aggressive as the rest, just not as many kills have been racked up by now. And once again, EDG is actually going to call this one off. May have taken a bit too long to set up. So we'll stay away for now. Good push here from Death and Mako. Guess it doesn't need to be pushed anymore. What a gank that could have been for them. Yeah. It's worth pointing out now that Edward Gaming, though, is pretty significantly in the lead. 1,300 gold up. The 80 carries up 20 minions himself. Two kills overall. It's looking good for the blue team. But this gold difference between 80 carries is going to be such a big problem. Urgot is obviously one of these 80 carries who doesn't need 1,550 gold when he goes back for BF Sword because he needs, like, Brutalize, he needs Tear. All these items, like 700 gold, 1,300 gold-ish around that time. So he has more ways of going back and getting a small power spike where Kalista in this matchup really needs to get BF Sword on her first back. Otherwise, she cannot effectively have enough burst to trade with the Urgot. But the gold on Anne here is obviously very low. 36 CS just picked up boots, yeah. nothing else. He is Forces so, it. so weak at this point. EDG can at any given time take this bot lane tower with Deft, then start a dragon fight because your Urgot is so much stronger, and then swap him simply to mid lane after or top, even if you want another out of turret. For now, you just keep ganging for Koro, for Koro because, well, nobody's there to help. Ziv. The second hop doesn't do much there, and Ziv's gonna go down right away. Doesn't get the bounce off the minions from what I could see. EDG picks up a very quick and clean kill, but with three guys top lane HQ right away says we want Dragon. It might just work out for him. And already a difference in Pawn's use of TF there. A lot of the times for Westor, it was with the team controlling and then the fight. Pawn's already off as he hits six and seven to the side lanes to control things. HQ do get their first Dragon, yeah. but we saw these going back and forth last game. The best they can do after three-man gang should top lane is, of course, taking the Dragon. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have been able to get it, had a fight being set up by EDG simply due to how weak Anne is at this point. So to get Dragon at least, the problem is your Nar is now 0-2. Enemy Aurelia has been off to a great start. She's gonna get Sheen very soon, and then these trades are gonna be very one-sided between them. Clear enough, 
Well, why not go back for another one? Yeah, and even though AHQ wants to camp for Anne, TF Aurelia can just explode her in a team fight, and both right. those champions are doing well. AHQ is spamming wards in the bot lane. Mountain's got a ton of the inventory trying to control this bottom jungle, trying to snowball that bot lane, but it might not even be enough as Ziv is in a dangerous spot right here. Not getting any easier for AHQ. You're just talking about ways to lock down Kalista. They've got it. Ways to keep locking down Ziv. He's a bit slippier. Slipperier, if you will. Words are hard. It's a slippery word. Yeah, but they do keep control in that top lane. Nine and a half minutes in. Pawn with his little bit of roam, making sure everything is safe around the map here to clean up the wave accordingly. That chalice up right now on Westor. Yeah, but with clear love showing top lane and not getting anything, it opens up for Mountain to go for gang in the bottom lane. They might try and go for dive here. That ward down for teleport. TP comes in as well. Mountain gets the knock up one more time on a death. Flash done. Will land an Urgot. Counter TP in from Rally, but in comes Westor. Looks for Mako. Giant two man. No roll gets one. It's going to get two. There's the two kills picked up. So we keep talking about how AHQ can just say we don't want to try and fight top lane because we know you're going to camp it. Instead, we try and snowball the other lanes. Five members in the bottom lane. TP used. Got the two kills. We'll get the tower as well from Anne here. So very important that AHQ start getting some gold for this AD carry. Well, using this time accordingly as well when they were in EDG's jungle. Very deep wards placed as well so they can react, rinse and repeat if they want to towards that bottom lane with a lot more safety. Edward Gaming, though, they have so many other tools at their disposal. Despite all these good ganks by AHQ, EDG is still up a thousand gold. They've yeah. got a Fed Aurelia and a Twisted Fate, who is going to Athene, so he's going to survive a little bit better in the one going against Wester. But there's so much split push power from EDG. You can see them knocking down that mid lane turret that we wanted to see against the melee assassin in the mid lane. A lot of maps right. to go for Edward Gaming. A very stand up play from Clear Love. He loves just walking into the lane when he knows they can put pressure on a tower. Just walks in, helps taking it down has to disengage from Gragas as well. So yeah, Fizz, not able to defend if you're already standing there pushing the tower. Can't really E into the minion waves on them being caught. And I mean, why not just go kill the Nargan? There may be a lot of wards on the bottom side of the map, but that is not where EDG is right now. The Destiny on to Ziv one time after the oh, other. Hold they up. keep going back. Koro tanks out one more shot. He'll be all right with 200 HP. And there's no push that can really come from HQ here. They weren't ready for anything. Not going to be able to act on anything. Another turret for EDG. They went from mid to top and get a kill with it. Yeah, get everything they want at this point here. Wouldn't even care if they lost the bottom tower with all the gold they're getting on right. the top side. But Anne is still so, so weak that on his own, he's not able to get close to this tower. Death is a lot stronger, so they're going to need to invest more members on the bottom side. But remember, they used teleport before. West started to roam down. Now he lost his mid tower. So EDG can even start warding in the lane and spot where the fizz is moving around the mid here. Mountain, though, he's looking for that one gank once again. Can he knock up? Yep. Oh, one time. Again, he does it twice for Mountain. He could be going down, though, a little too close to the turret. Daft is bleeding. He gets hit up as well, just at the end, by Albus. And it looks like they throw him to safety. Oh! He may be able to take out Anne as well. Transcendent Blades wears off, or Transcendent Blades, I should say, as they're on Anne. It's still a triple kill as Mako comes in with a follow-up hook. He already had Trinity Force at 12 minutes in, gets the reset off the enemy support, and Koro is putting his carry pants on in this wow. game. He got some pressure yeah. from Clear Love, and it's working out beautifully. EDG simply just managed to use every gang in the top lane to feed Koro so much, and every time HQ try down here, it just seems to go wrong. They got the two kills before, but that's been it from Third them. Now. Anne has been very far behind. Koro returns just running straight from base. We're at Trinity Force 12 minutes in. Triple kill, 5-0. I think we've all tried playing AD carry against the Fed Aurelia. It's not very fun. Yeah. Actually, Koro denied his own reset with his ultimate. He actually couldn't dash back into Kalista there because the ulti did too much damage. I rarely see that happen, but it did here, though. Koro going to make life miserable. Imagine facing a 5-kill Aurelia as Nar. She's got boots, almost Merc Treads now as well. Oh, man. Koro can do whatever he wants. EDG has just become more confident in their engagements each game. A very leveled game to game two, where they exploded a little bit past 20 minutes, and now right out of the gate, seven to three. 
that 4,000 gold lead. And Koro, he could probably 2v2 or 2v1 this situation without too much of a problem. Getting thrown back into the wall. He does get assistance from Clearlove. Oh! That Albus coming from the side, though. He flashes just out of range. Albus has no help to give in this fight. And a double kill as Clearlove is there just in time. EDG just knowing exactly what HQ wants to do, and they're here. They're already so far ahead. If you look at just some of the members with the items, Westor, we got a bot lane tower for his team. And he's the one player doing well on this one, but it seems like he just can't have enough impact on this game, and he can't get kills faster than Koro is, certainly. And Anne as well, forced to just rush Hurricane at some wave clear. We have the Fizz mid lane, so you need something to defend your towers. You know EDG has so many ways of pushing him down. Twisted Fate as well does so much Ooh. damage to the towers. Uh. Albus. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that happened. That's going to happen again and again, by the way, because yep. this jungle is going to be warded up by EDG. Let's see what Westdog can do. He's on a ward. Oh, it might be lunchtime. Gets Chum the Waters out onto Pawn. He will be able to get that follow-up damage. Trickster does not hit. Koro to come in now. Another 2v1 situation. He is loving it with his back against the wall here. That is how he is thriving in this game. And the team is always just steps away. Gate comes in. Not even going to need it. Troll a lull to Pawn. Whatever. Take the kill either way. Death's going to feel good about that one. 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. Looking alright for this one. 12 to 3 and Dragon number one now on the plate. EDG happy to chop this one up quickly. Have it for the second course. Very far in the lead now. And a 1 3 1 setup we're gonna see from EDG now. It's just gonna allow them to push every single lane down and still look for picks by just having a really untwisted fade move from the lanes into the mid lane if HQ tries anything. Early distortion on Twisted Fate as well. You have double. Uh, mobility Summoner and Ghost and Flash, so it's a very gold efficient upgrade and also really helps if you're sitting in these side lanes where you might have to escape from a potential three-man gang. That's gonna happen. Then you just buy time, wait for EDG to take something elsewhere. And Freaky, we were talking a little bit earlier, these games are crazy. They do just keep fighting, but once a team gets a hold, it's kind of a calculated crazy. Yeah, I mean, Edward Gaming <laughs> have such big leads, and, and props to them really have to celebrate how well they are using these advantages. Koro didn't even have teleport, but he walked down to bottom lane off a recall, being like, there's probably a fight down here. I've got a new force. Picked up a triple kill for it. Pawn constantly desking yeah. in and picking people off. Right. Very great play by Edward Gaming. It's just very good understanding of how HQ wants to play. You know if they're not investing time top lane trying to defend the NAR, that they have to make ganks mm -hmm. in the bottom lane. So every time there's a fight, in the top side, EDG recalls and then walks straight down to bottom lane knowing, okay, Mountain is going to be nearby, he's going to go in for something, and we're going to try and counter gang it. Clearlove did it, Koro has done it. He has six kills, he has five assists. The noob has missed one kill. <laughs> Off that kill participation, please. The oh! from Elvis. Bit of a miss there. That engagement is now down for AHQ as they kind of stretch themselves thin for this one, and it may not work out in the end. Death from over the wall, able to pick up a kill with the assist to three here, and AHQ again for their troubles are turned back to their base. Man, Edward Gaming just getting everything going their way, and poor AHQ can't catch a break. The flash terror is dodged away, now mid lane getting sieged. EDG have so many long range tools, and even the threat of a dive as well, 17 minutes in. Mid lane tier 2 just getting destroyed. Koro into the back line already. Where else would he be? He gets Lantern back up. Westor is a fish on a hook. And down he goes. Koro, when his godlike, walks away safely. And down goes the turret. EDG are just so far ahead that every single time they walk forward, they know they can win a fight. And honestly, for HQ, I mean, you don't have to wait for it to sit and like stall the game. You have to just try and create some picks. You have to hope that EDG goes a little bit ag too aggressive and you then catch them out and get a kill on your carry. The Fizz or the Callista really needs them. When you just sit on a Hurricane for Ann, I mean, he is close to no damage at this point. He can't defend yep. himself either against Aurelia. So again. EDG just saying, we can just go in. We have to CC. We have the items. Even land oh. pull Koro back out. Get the kill. Get the tower. Great CC stacking as well. You know, Fizz, one of the most slippery champions, and he is doing that 20 CDR build just his last game. Doing what he can to get away from stuff, but hook into flay into body slam into absolutely dead. Props to EDG for even in these small fights, playing them exactly right mechanically. Yeah, especially with Gragas Barrel as well, the chaotic fights. We've heard EDG talk about their mechanics and things like that do not phase them. They still know the target to focus on. The Gragas Barrel is just something that 
creates the chaos that they thrive in in the fights, and it works out perfectly for them. And we haven't seen Clear Love on Gragas that much. It's just something they're attuned to. Yeah, it's it's also again when you are a jungler in this current yeah. meta, and they are like these really top tier picks, you have to be able to play them in case right. things like Rex like gets picked away. And obviously for Clear Love, he's been around for long enough. I mean, the guy's won I don't know how many titles <laughs> by now. Picking up a Gragas should be fair enough. But honestly, this has just been a team effort from EDG as well. It's not just Coral winning the game on his own. It's the team really just feeding him every single yeah. kill in the top lane and then trying to play safe on the bottom lane and use that to really get a big lead. And we're 19 minutes and he has seven kills. And there's so many carries on this team, right? I remember Crumbs on the desk was just saying, you know, sometimes not Pawn anymore, it's Deft. Well, there's still Koro in the top lane who brings out these picks. We still remember the Hecarim pick against AHQ 11-0-9 and now the Aurelia 7-0-5. It's good to see Edward Gaming so well-rounded, honestly. This lineup is very scary. It's the one that dominated China for so long in right. this split. It was a pretty close run during the playoffs, but looks like EDG in about as good a form as they have been in the last few months. And if the game continues going this way, they would be heading into the finals on a 9,000 gold lead so far in this game three. Just crossing 20 minutes in as Baron comes in. That's usually the go signal for Edward Gaming to win the game off a buff like that. Yeah, we know that's going to be an option. Keep the Twisted Fate with the ulti on the bottom side, just to push every single lane. Basically, you're just trying to shove AHQ into a corner. You just make right. the minimap even smaller for them, so they can't barely move outside the base without risking being jumped on by EDG, because they can't really win the fights in the side lanes. Koro is going to jump every single time he has the chance, and you cannot trade back with him. And then EDG now simply has to start warding off the jungle of AHQ, especially on the top side, so you have that Baron pressure. So you put a ping on the Baron, then you put a few wards in the jungle, you clear out these pings that HQ has around the red buff, and you simply make it impossible for them to ever walk in, because then they have to face check, potentially, three, four members, and a twist of fate coming down as well. So that's the game plan for Edward Gaming. Strength control over Baron, take the buff for the next, I'm gonna guess one minute it's gonna die. And then an easy push in from there with all the range champions they've got. Meanwhile, AHQ just so far back. You mentioned earlier, watch out for face check. How about just one person? How about just Koro? Flashes in, looks for Ann. The dodge comes in, still Can't takes him out. And now Pawn joins the fray. Ziv is not going to be Megan R for a while. Hops off of Albus' head, short as he may be on Annie. And there's a flash away from the support. But a lantern comes oh. in to pick up oh. even more. Edward Gaming crushing AHQ. Just when you think the fight's over, here comes a lantern off the fog of war. And it's still continuing. EDG going for one of their favorite objectives in the game. 21 minutes in. Both of these teams have times of the earliest barons. So it's HQ has to try and no different. They're going for it again. To try and go for some kind of steal. I mean, that's the only way for you back in the game now. Oh. Not gonna happen, and now Ziv's gonna try to run away, but the Flay's gonna land on one, the hook onto the other. Mountain can't even get over a wall, and that's gonna be four kills picked up in a row, plus the Baron for Edward Gaming. Full control on everything. HQ tried to set up a trap top lane. Koro really showed that uh, he wasn't gonna fall for that, he was ready to fight. And now Westor. Really hard for AHQ to fight back at all at this point. You can see Ann is pretty much throwing pebbles at people with that hurt. Oh, Nick man. Ann. He gets grabbed in. He won't be throwing too much. Sticks and stones go at him from the side of EDG, and he goes down. It is now going to be the inhibitor turret. 22 and a half minutes in. The dragon is alive if they want to go and get that on the way out, but it looks like they should be able to grab the inhib as well. Koro wants more. And maybe they'll even just grab Albus on top of this one. Oh. Down goes the Annie legendary Koro. 9, 0, oh, and 6. Now he's missed out on five kills for the team, so, you know, more noobness as the game <laughs> goes on, but dragons on, up Carl, if they want it. Game. Seriously, five is, is a lot to miss for a single target champion. They're only at a kill a minute here. I don't know what's going on. More aggression, please, Edward Gaming. You're not winning the game fast enough, but they are certainly dominating here in game three, making a statement. Pong gonna knock down one more turret as the sixth has yeah. fallen. An easy dragon on the way back out. Edward Gaming getting better and better as these games go on. At two to three to 5,000 difference for those top laners right now. Such a disparity between these two as EDG seem to completely level up throughout the series so much faster. HQ had quite a showing here at MSI, really representing the LMS and the Taiwanese 
region so, yeah. so well. Beating out Fnatic, beating out Team Solo Med, had a great game against SK Telecom, really pulled them to late game Absolutely. before Easy Huna and Asir could win the game for them. But EDG has just been, honestly, a level above if you look at the big picture. Yeah. In terms of the, you know, the lane swap and control, seems to be bigger champion pulls as well, more options yeah. on how you want to play out the game. And while HQ tried to match them in terms of team fighting, right. one, must, one mistake would basically be enough to swing it in favor of EDG. And that's what has happened in the last few games. This one has just been such a one-sided affair. Very predictable game plan for EDG, but just so little you could do against it. In all of HQ's games, they seem to stay quite level. Quite level, but it's never enough to push them to getting an advantage. They're only able to stay with the team they're against, and then you see EDG take over. You see SKT take over in the end there. Yeah, Edward Gaming playing fairly tempered right now. Happy to push all the waves in for now. Baron buff about to be timing out in the next few seconds. But four members staying top, making sure they are grouped together. Now, Pawn cannot join them. He destined to the bot lane. Yep. It's a 5v4 opportunity for AHQ once they get West Door in. But even that might not be enough to win the fight. Mountain in. Pretty slow on this one. Kind of telegraphed as he came over the wall. EDG is able to set up here. Mountain goes down to about a third of his HP. Koro just able to force out West Door here. And hey, Pawn's having some pretty good time here in the bottom lane with this turret. AHQ is going to have to react, but they'll just lose even more. Right on to Ann. The point stun for him, but he's able to start dashing around. Ziv doing what he can. Fate's call. Elvis will not go back into the fight. They need as many members as possible here as they defend the base. AHQ could not even win a four versus five. You saw Koro by himself zone out West Door's Fizz. Pawn just soloed the bottom lane inhibitor turret and nearly the inhibitor itself as well. They are running out of options here on the red side. Top lane inhib getting focused now as well. EDG keeping four guys up here. The fight now between Pawn and West Door. Playful Trickster gonna dodge away. Gold card oh. on the back side, but Pawn's losing a lot of health. Oh, the, ch the potion chug right at the end, pretty much keeping him alive, even though the Grievous Wound's knocking it down. Westdoor doesn't look like he wants to give up Pursuit just yet. Looks like Pawn may try to outplay him by just hanging tight, or may try to keep Westdoor from backing here now that he starts to re-engage. Looks like he'll have his control on the wave, with now Destiny up. Pointing back to his team. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He's in here, guys, by the way. He just wants to go home. All right, let's all chase Westdoor. Who gets the kill? No, he's gonna get out. Oh? Oh, that recall, though. Hi, it's Mako! <laughs> Dash All right. Buying some time. Darn, I was wrong. Buying some time. All right, time. good. That kill did go to Koro. He's keeping up. Still only down five. Gonna keep that KP stat as high as he possibly can on Aurelia, but two yeah. inhibs down, and just getting a bunch of farm, trying to just clear out some of these minion waves, trying to run away. Koro over the wall, just fearless now for Edward Gaming. Every a great hook one. catches Mountain. Rek'Sai in a really bad way here. In comes the rest of the team through the lanterns. 22 to 3. Death flashing <laughs> forward for a swap. Can't quite get Sending it. a message. Sending a message. That's Sending right. Sending a message. Absolutely. The, the zoning flash. <laughs> the zoning flash. I like it. We'll see what they can do to stop these Nexus turrets from going down. It seems quite inevitable at this point, gentlemen. A four-man NAR swipe just causes EDG to backpedal a little bit, even more than I would think. Pawn, however, coming back in is the aggression that they need. The Fates call to try and save Albus. And at 10 HP, West oh. at 100 and now zero. And it looks like EDG will have the base. Game three in their eyes in just a few more minutes here. But they may not have the waves to finalize the game yet as they just skirmish throughout. AHQ's base. Koro stops the wriggle. He's got teleport. He can heal back up, but who even cares? There's more kills coming through. This one, though, Koro misses out on. Now down six of his team's kills, but either way, it's getting better and better. Edward Gaming going to take this series three to zero. They're headed to the finals. Very well played matchup by Edward Gaming. Both teams coming out firing in that first game. We saw it go to about 15 to 15 and the final fight brought out 27 to 17. Yeah. And EDG used that momentum throughout every game following to crush HK. It's a very clear game plan for them here and 
HQ to try to make plays elsewhere is never had the same effect as when you are three-man gank in front of Aurelia Top Coral. Going absolutely crazy in this game, and EDG just showing they were the better team today. They were absolutely better, and that last game really showed it all. Showed the diversity of the Edward Gaming lineup. We know you guys like to gank the bot lane to try to get Ann ahead. Well, not only was Edward Gaming winning the two-on-two, -two, but Koro hard carried this game. 12-0-7. The ganks for him absolutely worked, and he crushed people on Aurelia. Yeah. Now facing SKT tomorrow, when they played them early in this tournament, Tristana was locked in by Deft. He fell really <laughs> far behind in the early game. They talked about how there were some mistakes. Not sure we're going to see that one, but I really want to see these two teams here because EDG has shown an ability to play such a good early game, and that's where SKT has struggled. We saw the Fnatic game, they were yep, fall behind. Right. This matchup is going to be very, very close in the final. And when you're seeing a team play aggressively, it's so good to have multiple ways of bringing it out. AHQ eventually got predictable. You saw the gangs the bottom lane get outplayed, but the fact that Westor is known to hard carry the fact, or sorry, Koro is, is, can hard carry, the fact <laughs> that Pawn is known to carry, the fact that Deft is known to carry, a multi-pronged threat team is a good thing to have here. EDG definitely can match up very well in this. Pitchforks are multi-pronged, right? Stab. Tridents for, right for Pawn. Tridents for Pawn. He took, he took the fizz away. I know. Grabbed his trident and took AHQ down. EDG now facing SKT in the finals. Going to be an amazing matchup. This game stayed again a kill over a minute, so I'm sure we're going to get the same thing out of the finals. It's going to be fantastic. We obviously have an awesome analyst desk to break down the game, so we're going to throw it over to Dash and company to do so.